Hey guys, welcome to Awesome Toys TV and I think this time you guys will be very happy with this video because there aren't a lot of premium Bandai kits. Most of the kits you're going to be seeing here are regular release. So this is the first step to a very good news for this video. Um, obviously with the Shizuka Hobby Show coming up on the 13th or 14th, 2021 May, we were expecting Bandai to inform the general public of what's coming up for the particular show. and. Surprisingly, they actually dropped a lot of big announcements today for Shizuka Hobby Show that's coming up next month. Surprisingly, Shizuka Hobby Show this year will not be including any visiting tickets. So it's only going to be open to the trade and business uh, ticket holders. So I guess it's going to be our only glimpse into all the upcoming kits by Banda. And I expected the real great Hainu Gundam looks amazing. We knew this kit was coming out. Uh, I just wasn't expecting to see such a great looking kit. It's very chunky, tons of details, tons of gimmicks, independent uh, moving funnel, great gimmicks on the articulation on the knee, how everything moves just like a normal master grade would be. And I think overall, proportion-wise, it looks great. And the best news is this is not a premium Bandai kit. So this is going to be a normal release and you should be able to buy them at a retail pricing. So that's indeed a very big and good news for all of us high new Gundam fans. The one that I was not expecting Bandai to reissue, or sorry, not reissue, to release is a high-grade 19 yen coming in July 7,700 yen. Uh, yes, you might say that it is a little bit more expensive than typical kits at this price point, but don't forget this is a high grade kit and not a reborn one 100 scale kit. So you'll get a lot better articulation, a lot more gimmicks, you know, moving hatches, a lot of uh, independent arm movements under the cockpit as well. And of course, the skill and size of the Nightingale is pretty astounding. So for those of you who actually bought the previous Reborn 1 100 scale Nightingale, I would say that this is an actual step up, or maybe a version 1.5. It is not a version 2.0. There are better articulation improvement and of course, a lot more gimmicks compared to the Reborn 1 100 scale kit. And I think the biggest bonus is not only is this a normal release, but it is also cheaper than the previous Reborn 1 100 series which came in at close to 9,000 yen. This is only about 7,700 yen. Very good looking kit and it is a normal release. Must buy together to pair it with the high new Gundam. So I'm looking forward to this. So two big news <laughs> announcement today. The thrusters on the back of the um, Nightingale mobile armor looks fantastic indeed. So I think in terms of details, you guys can probably panel line and you know, scribe your own panel lines on the Nightingale if you want to. What I was not expecting was the figure standard to actually see more characters from the Gundam Sea Universe. The new figure standard Lucas Klein is coming up. Um, looks great. Three separate face plates, a lot of different arm, sorry, hand parts as well, and also a small little pink haro. So for those of you who are big Gundam seed fans and even collect all characters and I do think that Bandai will probably be going to be reissuing sorry not reissuing but issuing all the characters in figure standard form so the figure standard kits some of them are a little bit sticker heavy just like the Kamen Rider Ryuki that we've seen before but for this particular kit for Lacus Klein it looks pretty good actually there's not a lot of stickers that's required the face is already pre-painted anyways and the color separation looks spot on so looks quite good if you're a big Gundam Seed fan, this is probably a must-have. Switching gears to SD Gundam Kids and of course SD World Heroes series has been pretty good so far, better than the earlier season last year. And I was not actually expecting the Gundam X to actually make an appearance in the SD World series. And the kit actually looks pretty good. Obviously, these are official pictures which they have pre-painted everything. So you will have to take the official pictures with a pinch of salt because you would have to really paint this kit a lot if you don't want to use the stickers. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Gundam X design and I think it looks pretty good translated into the SD World Heroes Arsenine Gundam X character. Okay, um, 
Coming in at 660 yen, again, like I said, it's going to be quite sticker heavy, so do expect to paint these kits if you want them to look as good as what you've seen here in the official pictures. SD Gundam World Heroes, very busted team member, so this is the um, the team members for the sergeant. You want to create an army, this is what you need to buy. It comes with quite a lot of accessories, but the one that most of us will probably be leaning towards to would be the Verde Buster DX bundle. So in episode 1, if you guys remember episode 1, he actually bring up that two big ass cannon on top of his shoulder and fired at Wukong. This is something that I was really keen at, but only today we get to see the official DX product pictures. 2200 yen, quite pricey for a SD kit, but then again, I think you're getting quite a lot of value for your money. The eyes of the Wooded Buster are clear parts, but the rest of it are pretty much stickers, so that's the unfortunate part. And today it's been revealed there's going to be a DX kit for Sun Wukong as well, or Goku Impulse Gundam DX set. So these are all the additional parts um, that we can expect to see when it goes through some different form changes and also additional weapon accessories for this particular character. So waiting to see episode 3 and 4 happening this week and next week to see how these guys actually play out. Um, there's actually quite a lot of WIP pictures of SD World Hero kits being shared by Japanese and also Taiwanese builders. And yes, those kits definitely look quite pale, a lot of stickers, but the good thing is it actually comes with quite a lot of clear parts, so you don't have to worry about those particular parts, but the rest of it, you will probably still want and need to paint them, okay? Um, the biggest surprise to me for SD kit series is actually a new SDEX standard wing Gundam. I was not expecting this, um, but I have to say, it looks like Banda is still going to be pushing the SDEX line instead of uh, you know churning these guys out in the SDCS series. So yeah, I'm not sure why exactly they are maintaining two separate lines for the SD kits. Because definitely, I would say that SDCS, even though they cost a little bit more, they are definitely a lot better looking, a lot bigger, taller, and also more fun to play with as well. But I suppose they are retaining the SDEX line for people who really love the original look of the small, super deformed look of the SD Gundam kids. What I was really excited about was today we finally get to see the official pictures of the high grade getter arc. This kit looks really, really badass, especially with that backpack. All those uh, sharp lance or whatever it's called, I don't know what is the actual official name of it, but the kit looks really good. A lot of details, a lot of separate cut, uh, sorry, separate parts, color separation. So overall, I don't think there's going to be a lot of stickers coming in for this kit. If you can paint those sharp um, spikes at the back of the Ghetto Arc, I think it will look really good in gunmetal or metallic silver. And of course, it has that very big double axe that he carries as his weapon. This is one kit that I will definitely be getting as I'm a big fan of those old vintage retro robots that's been redesigned with a much more aggressive design language. One of my favorite Kamen Rider is actually Kamen Rider Force, and the figure standard version of this guy looks pretty good. I don't think it's going to have a lot of stickers as what we've seen from the Kamen Rider Rookie series. And at a 3,500 yen price point, it is quite appealing as well. Looks like it's going to have a very nice mixture of white, silver, and also tons of details on the body which we can penalize. And that is actually something I'm looking forward to. I hope Bandai will release all the separate uh, weapon packs for the Kamen Rider Forze figure standard kit. Looks like the eyes are clear parts, so that's a big bonus as well. And Kamen Rider Forze DX belt is also one of my favorite toys to play with. Now, something new from Bandai is actually a 132 scale skeleton dinosaur that you actually built. So, I'm not sure how accurate it will be compared to what you see in the museum. Obviously, it won't be as detailed as that, but it will be quite interesting to see how they actually created a kit out of the T-Rex skeleton. So this will be something quite fun for kids to build and also display and I'm sure that a lot of you are going to be doing a diorama of this as a um, discovery of T-Rex hidden in the dirt or something like that. So that looks quite interesting. I'll definitely be getting this because it's something fun, something new and looks like quite a fun new building experience if you've never built a T-Rex model kit before. I'm sure Bandai is not the only company that's come up with a plum model kit for T-Rex but damn you know I, I really want to see how they actually achieve this. Finally and I really do mean finally after season 2 has finished 
we finally have the Mandalorian Vesca Armor Silver Coating Kit. 5,288 and it's a good price for the high asking price. It is going to be in a high gloss silver finish. At least that's what it says in the uh, website. But I'm sure you probably need to apply your own high gloss finish for this particular kit. It looks really good. My only concern is in terms of the helmet, would that be a sticker or would that be actually a clear part? So it comes with the jetpack, the um, spear and also the gun. I'm actually still watching season 1, so please no spoilers in the comment section below. I'm still trying to find time to actually finish season 1 before I move on to season 2. Now let's talk about Girl Gun Lady. I've actually watched all 3 episodes and I've said the show so far has been good. A lot of... Um, they didn't follow the usual trope of gun action anime series revolving girl characters so that's actually quite interesting and this is the new Lady Commander Ahmad so I'm not sure whether this is going to be a new form of Alice or this a new commander that's going to enter the show in episode 4 but so far the show looks pretty good and I'm actually quite interested to get some of the girl gun commander or the, the commander girls when it comes out in Malaysia sometime soon and finally, Bandai also announced some new 30 minutes mission for the upcoming event in Shizuka. And this time around, it's going to be a female model Spinisha instead of the typical male model Spinisha. This is the Fences Bank in purple color. Looks pretty good. I think it's quite a refreshing change to have a female base robots for the 30 minutes mission compared to the typical male body that we've seen in the 30 minutes mission series. Also coming up is the 30 minutes mission Spinacia Assassin specification. Um, I have to say it looks pretty good even though it's going to be in all pink with a green color eye module. Looks pretty good. Not a lot of details but I do dig the three separate color separation between white, pink and grey for this particular kit. 1408 yen, not very expensive. I really dig those heels on the feet of both the female base Spinacia model. So these guys are going to be showcased at the Shizuka Hobby Show very soon. What I was not expected was a new option pack that's called the Weapons Magic Arms. This was the one that I really gravitated to, uh, sorry, gravitated to. It looks quite amazing. So all these clear green color plastic parts looks pretty good. Um, it helps to give that bright color contrast when you're casting magic spells against the bland white and grey color body of the Spinacia or the 30 minutes mission robot body. So that's actually quite interesting. Also coming up is another option pack. So Bandai is releasing a lot more option packs for the 30 minutes mission. I think fans of this particular franchise and line should be thankful. This is the new optional part set 5, multi-wing and also multi-burster. So if you ever want to customize some very cool looking backpack or add additional attachment arms to the head or to the backpack of the 30 minutes mission male or female Spinacia body as well, you can now do so. So these guys are coming out very, very soon. But out of all the 30 minutes mission that's been announced by Banner today, the one that I actually got quite excited is the new extra vehicle dog mode. So this particular guy looks like it, you can actually attach quite a lot of uh, weapons to this dog maker. It is unfortunate that this whole particular dog maker comes only in one color. So it looks kind of bland, right? So if you guys want to paint this, I think it will probably look a lot better than just one tone black color for the XR vehicle dog mecha. I think the one that everybody's waiting for are the 30 minutes sisters that's going to be announced and coming out very very soon. So all the optional parts and also the characters themselves should be coming out sometime in quarter 3 in August and also September. I don't have much to say other than how great these guys or sorry these girls look. It is definitely going to be competing straight up against the Frame Arm Girls. But given how the Frame Arm Girls series from Kotobukiya actually has a lot more weapon accessories and detail, I don't think that the 30 Minute Sisters is going to be... Um, or maybe they might be a good competition to the Frame Arm Girls, right? Because the Frame Arm Girls series is not exactly cheap. So maybe this is going to be an easy entry for those people who want a female-led character, robot, weapons, just like the Frame Arm Girls, 
cheaper at a lower price point. So all these guys are coming out sometime in August and September. It's quite a long wait, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait with all the optional weapons and also for this face plates that we're going to be getting with the 30 minute sisters. With the Freedom Gundam statue still underway in progress, they are up to the torso right now. I think we should be expecting the statue to be ready sometime soon. And Bandai just announced all the official pictures pricing for the 1100 scale full mechanics Freedom Gundam version GCP. I have to say, for this price, the level of detail is quite astounding for a non Master Grade kit. I wasn't expecting that much level of detail. It looks a lot more detailed compared to the Master Grade Freedom Gundam version 2.0. But of course, I won't be expecting a lot of articulation for this kit, and there probably wouldn't be any in a frame going in for a full mechanic kit so don't expect to have some crazy poses with this particular kit what is also coming out is the SDEX Freedom Gundam version GCP as well and I think this is the, probably the one that I'm actually leaning towards too um, at this price point for a SDEX kit tons of detail it looks really good as well and this is something that you probably wouldn't be able to buy if you are not in China because it's going to be a special version that is modeled against the statue that's going to be coming up in China. There's also going to be a Mobile Suit Ensemble version GCP as well, but that is a premium Bandai exclusive, so you should be able to afford uh, to order that when it comes out. Also, a high grade RX 70 2 special GCP version, but yeah, not much details and pricing as of now. But Bandai has also announced tons of merchandise like t shirt hoodies, bags, keychain, cups, a lot of stuff if you're going to be visiting the Freedom Gundam statue in China. So if you guys are going there, please watch out for all these premiums that you can buy at the event. The next wave of the Gundam G-Frame series is coming out very soon. This candy box, I think this particular wave will be of particular interest for most of you. Obviously, with the Ifrikai coming out with the high grade one profile scale reissue premium Bandai, some of you probably wouldn't be able to get that particular hybrid kit, but I think in consolation, being able to buy a candy toy version of the Ifrikai could be something as a separate consolation, I suppose. It's not exactly expensive, uh, but of course, these being blind boxes, you will have to try your luck to secure the right model kit, or sorry, the right mobile suit that you want. But if you choose to buy the entire set, you of course can do so, but be wary that the price is going to be a little bit more expensive if you buy the full set instead of trying your luck in buying the blind boxes yourself. The Ifrikai, the uh, Blitz, and so the GMs, they all look really good, highly detailed. And of course, for those of you who are new to the G-Frame series, these guys actually comes in two separate boxes for one particular mobile suit. So one box will contain the actual inner frame itself, and the other box will be the armor that you put on for the mobile suit. Probably one of the better candy toys for Gundam in the market today. Also coming up separately is the Mobile Suit Gundam G-Frame EX04 Blue Destiny Unit 2 and Unit 3. And this is the only premium Bandai item that I'm going to talk about today that you can actually buy uh, of premium Bandai. So today's news is actually pretty good. We got to see a lot of normal releases of upcoming kits from Bandai. You know how in the last 6-12 to 12 months, we actually been seeing a lot of premium Bandai kit news and releases. And I know a lot of you are exactly happy with it. Especially in these crazy times with COVID-19, a lot of us have our jobs affected, our income affected. So it's actually quite a welcome change to see more normal kit releases. And if anybody from Bandai is looking at this video, I do hope you guys uh, you know, take notice into what the fans are saying. Definitely, I think every single fan here would love to buy more premium Bandai kits. But those coming in at a premium at this challenging economic times, it may not be the best uh, interest for the hardcore fans of this particular hobby. Now, back to other upcoming kits. This is, of course, the candy wafer toy that actually has the box art of all the previous Gundam kits. This time around, this wave it looks like it's going to be focusing a lot more on the new and upcoming releases. So, I will probably be skipping this one to be very frank. A big news today is, of course, Yodabashi Japan actually unwittingly announced the upcoming Master Grade that's going to be coming soon 
in August. So we don't know what it is exactly, but it is going to be coming in at 5,500 yen. So it probably won't be a premium bundle kit. It is classified as new product A. So everybody is speculating now what could this potential master grid going to be. All I can tell you is um, there really is no point of speculating at this point. But at 5,500 yen and it's not a premium bandai kit. So you can probably get the answers by 13 or 14 May once Shizuka Hobby Show is underway. So until then, we probably wouldn't know what is going to be that mystery master grid that's coming up. And finally, as usual, we put the most expensive product at the end of the video. And this time around, it is not a Gunpla kit, but a Gundam related merchandise. This is a 24 karat statue of the Zaku 2 and also the RX-7-2 in one 100 scale size and height. So in case you're wondering what's so special about this, well, there's only 20 units available for each model and they are made out of pure 24 K carat gold. The beam rifle version is coming in at okay, hang on to your drink, 26 million and 400,000 yen. You can look at the conversion in the local currency at the ticker below, but yeah, this guy's definitely is going to be well worth every single cent you spend because this is an actual pure gold statue of a Gundam. And this guy's definitely is going to be quite limited because, because there's going to be only going to be 20 units available worldwide. And if you have some spare cash lying around or if you made tons of money from cryptocurrency lately, I would highly recommend getting these guys because I don't think Uworks is going to be making this again anytime soon. So pretty good looking. The Zaku 2 is also coming in at the same price, same size, same height as well, 1100 scale. And the Zaku definitely does look a lot better and a lot more complex. I do like how the statue pose for both the Zaku 2 and the RS-100-2 has a little bit of movement, not so static like a typical standard museum pose. This is also only coming in at 20 units available worldwide, 26,400,000 yen. Very nice to have if, like I said again, if you have some spare cash lying around. But for those of you who actually don't want to spend so much money on a gold statue, and you, but you still want to have something, of a gold statue Gundam related merchandise. There's also going to be a R-100-2 beam saber version coming in at a smaller scale and that is coming in at close to 3.9 million yen. Also again made out of 29, sorry, 24 karat gold. So this is not a model kit, it is a fixed statue. So once you buy it, you just put it up and display it. It also comes with a special LED case and also display box for you to showcase the particular gold statue that you bought. For the Beam Saber version, I think there's only going to be a smaller quantity available. I'm not sure. Let me check. But for now, yeah, these are the three most expensive releases that I can think of worldwide today. And I want to say a very big thank you to all of you who stayed on with us until the end of the video. I know this video is a little bit long because there were just so many new kids coming up from Bandai today. I think obviously everybody will be spending a lot of time speculating into what will be the new Master Grid kit coming out. But do stay tuned with us because once the Shizuka Hobby Show comes up, we should have a lot more live pictures of the actual kits that's being showcased here today. Because everything that we see here today are basically just the official pictures. But it'll be good to actually see how the kit actually looks like in person. The real great High New Gundam and also the High Grade Nightingale looks pretty good. Very thick, tons of details, tons of gaming. And the best news is, of course, they are both regular releases and not premium Bandai. So, wow, big, big news today. So, a big thank you to all of you who are sticking with us until the end of the video. Please give us a support with a small channel. Every single subscribe and like and comment really help us out a lot in this channel. So, I look forward to seeing you guys in the comment section below. Do drop by and say hi and let me know what you guys think about all the new releases today by Bandai. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next upcoming video.